Hello everyone and welcome to Merlin's Manor. Today I'm going to be teaching how to play the solo mode of Everdale as well as a playthrough. I'm going to give some of the basics here up front and then explore the rest as we go. And so the first thing, this is how the board gets set up. You're going to get five cards yourself. And you're going to set all these cards up, eight cards in the meadow here. These are cards that can be claimed whenever you have the amount of resources that they require to claim them. And you'll see the resources here in this corner. You also have the ability to acquire them if you have, uh, let's say you had the farm played, you would have the ability to play this one for free because uh, he plays for free with the farm and then you'd put a door on your farm that you had uh, like that to show that you played it because you can only do that once per game per card. And so if you had that farm played in your tableau, you could then play this one for free like that. Otherwise, you'd be playing three berries for him. This one would require two wood and a resin, stone, resin, wood, so on and so forth, in order to play them if you aren't able to play them for free by what's in the corner there. And so these are going to be available as long as, as they're here, but uh, every time you play a card, Rugwort is going to uh, take one at random by rolling a... Uh, dice, eight-sided die here, and right there, it would have been six, and so he would have taken one, two, three, four, five, six. This card is what he would have taken uh, had I played a card and rolled that, and so that's how that part works. Uh, later on in the game, a few of these aren't going to be available, but I will address that as we get to that point. Now you are going to, it's fairly simple, the way you play this game is a worker placement game, where you are going to place a worker somewhere, get the resources from that location, like here would be two wood and one card. Uh, here would be three wood, but you can't go there in the first round because Rugwort starts out on the three wood location and on the first forest location. And so you won't be able to go to either of these spots the first round, and then he's going to move on there the second, down there the third, and the fourth is going to move to another, another spot. This one's going to move here the second, all the way over there the third, and then over here for the fourth, and so those will clear up as we go while other things get uncleared. Uh, you have some special events up here which you are going to try to achieve, and they have prerequisites on them. This one, you need to have the inn and the bard played in your tableau in order to claim it, and then it also has, when achieved, you may place up to three berries here, and you get two points per berry. This one, you need to have two of each symbol, uh, and the symbols are right here on the cards. You have to have two of each of those symbols in order to be able to claim that one, and it is nine victory points. The, here you have to have the shopkeeper and the post office, and when you achieve you may give opponents up to a total of three. Uh, in this case you just get rid of three. Uh, Rugwort doesn't take the three himself. And then for each donation you gain two victory points. And this one on the end requires the courthouse and the ranger, and when achieved you place up to two critters from your city beneath that event, and you get three points per critter that you're able to do that with. And so you want to try and find those people in the and, and constructions inside the deck and get them played in order to claim those. And uh, if any that you don't claim by the end of the game, Rugwort is going to get points for those. On um, easy mode, Rugwort will score uh, three points for each special event that you did not achieve, as well as three points for each of these basic events that you didn't achieve or that he was able to grab before you and he'll have a chance to grab those at the end of seasons if you haven't already grabbed them and I'll explain that as we go a little bit more in depth. He also will get two points per card in his city and three points for each purple prosperity card which these are the, the prosperity cards right here. And so one of the things that's different about solo mode from multiplayer as far as strategy goes, uh, in multiplayer, they're, they're, well, in, in both games, they're, they're, in both ways of playing, there are certain cards that get rid of cards. Uh, like, for instance, this one. Uh, discard a construction from your city, gain resources equal to that construction's cost, and draw two cards. This is great for getting rid of a low point card at, while getting the resources back and getting cards to extra cards to play. But you are going to have rolled a dice for him to or roll the die for him to grab that card when you first played it. And now when you play the ruins, he's going to roll again. And so he's going to get a lot more cards in his city than you are if you're using a lot of these 
uh, cards that destroy something in your city. So while there is a benefit towards doing that, uh, even in solo mode, you have to be a little bit more careful because they, the, the big advantage to doing that in multiplayer is everybody has just 15 spaces in their city that they can put anything in and you're trying to maximize those 15 spaces. Here, you still have the 15 spaces, but he is allowed to collect as many cards as you roll for. And so if you do a lot of those things that give you extra um, times playing a card in your tableau, he's gonna get extra points that way than you are going to overall if you do that too much. So you have to be very careful and selective about the times that you destroy one card to add another card, making sure that it is uh, very worthwhile in that situation. And so this is the basic setup, and what you're going to be doing is you're going to be, of course, getting the resources to play various critters. You're going to start out with two workers that you can put on the board, and you're going to then, after the end of the first season, you're going to be able to get a third worker. At the end of the, the second season, you'll be able to get a fourth worker, and then at, at the end of that season, you'll get two more workers for a total of six workers. And so it starts out where you can't do a whole lot, but then it kind of ramps up as you go along, as you have cards that are going to give you benefits throughout the game, as well as you're going to have more workers to do more things with as you go. And so I'll kind of explain some of these benefits as we go along, and let's uh, go ahead and get into the game at this point. So like I said, Rugwurts on these two spaces, so I will not be able to go to those ones. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here. I get one wood, one resin, and one berry. And then the next thing I'm going to do is take this worker here. I can get two of any resources here. And so I am going to get two stone. Now the reason I did this was so that I can play this card right here. And this is the courthouse. It is a unique construction worth two points at the end of the game. It has uh, one of these scroll icons on it. And, I, and it allows me to gain one wood, resin, or stone every time I play a construction after this. And if I find the judge, I can get him for free. Courthouse is also one of the ones we're looking for up here. If I can find the ranger, I can claim that one over there. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, in order to claim these basic events, you have to have three of the scrolls to get this one, three paw prints to get this one, four of uh, the gro growing plant symbols to get that one, and three of these traveling poles right here to get that one. And so I, I'm gonna play this one, it's gonna cost me two stone, one resin, and one wood. And then we are going to move on to Rugwort taking a card. I'm gonna go ahead and roll in here so we can see. So he's gonna take the fourth one, which is this peddler here. As soon as he takes that, this one comes back out, or comes out. And then all I have left is a berry. There's not a whole lot I can do with that. The judge isn't out, so I can't claim him for free. And now normally I would have tried to play at least one green card in this situation, but I decided to go after the courthouse for this benefit since uh, it wouldn't have given me a whole lot of extra stuff anyway, the, the very little I could have gotten out in the first place anyway. The reason why I would normally try and get a green card in this situation is after, when I go into the next season here, I would have gotten to activate all green cards that are in my tableau. But as I have none, this is not one of those, so it's not going to activate. I will get my worker back though, and then, or my new worker, and then get two, my two workers back here. Rugwort is going to move on to that spot, and this spot. And the next thing that's going to happen is Rugwort is going to come out here. Now that card can no longer be grabbed. I'm going to put it like this so you can see that he's on there a little bit better. So that card is no longer available for me, but Rugwort can take that card if he rolls a one. And so going into the next round now, I am going to get some more resources that I need. I'm going to come here and get three wood, like so. I'm going to come here and get more resources. I'm going to get two resin, so I can't come here and get the two resin. And then I'm going to play farm from here. It's going to cost me one resin and two wood.
and I gain a berry when I play it, and I'll gain a berry later on when we get to autumn. And so we replace this, roll the die, eight, so he's already got a prosperity card, that's not good, right? Now here is the wonder, here's another thing that's a little bit different in solo than in multiplayer, is that the lookout is actually a free extra car, uh, space, he doesn't take up a space in your city, and so in multiplayer usually that's one that you really want to go after because it's a free extra point on top of your 15 other cards, but here you have to kind of de debate, is it worth giving him an extra card just to get that one extra point? And for that it isn't, but maybe for the draw three it might be more worthwhile for you. Uh, that's pretty much a gimme if you can afford to get him out in a multiplayer game. In solo game, you kind of have to weigh, is the benefit of the draw three cards going to be worth giving him at least one extra point than you, if not two extra points for that play. So what I'm going to go ahead and do next is I am going to play the husband for free because I have a farm. And so I go ahead and put this door on my farm and play him. And if I had had a wife, I would have gotten a resource from playing him, but I do not currently have a wife played. But the wife and the husband can share a space when you do get them, so that's, that is a, a good advantage there. They don't take up the extra space, plus if you have a husband-wife combo, it's worth extra points. Rogwart just got teacher. And out comes the chip sweep. Oh, and I forgot when I played this, I should have gotten one of these resources, and I think I'm going to get a wood. And the reason for that is I'm going to play another farm by playing two wood and this. And so I get a berry from doing that. And then he will roll. He gets the lookout. And that new card comes up. I think I want a stone as my resource. And I'm going to get a resin and a card. So you have a hand limit of eight. So if you ever get to eight, you can't take any more cards. Or some people will play a house rule where you can take the cards and discard down, but that is a house rule that some people play by, not an official rule. So, I will now play Resin Factory. I play Resin Factory. I pay one resin and one stone, but then I get a resin back. I'm also going to get a resource of my choice, so I'm going to get another stone back, because, and again, that's that court courthouse is paying off really well right now. Now we're going to roll, oh, he got my chip sweep, I was just about to play him, hate it when that happens. So the re I was going to be able to play him for free by getting that resin refinery down, but he stole. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do, I guess, is get the general store down. It's going to cost me a stone, one of these, and I will get to gain two berries, one, two, because I have a farm. So I get an additional berry for that. And then, what do I want as my resource? Um, I'm just going to take a stone for now. And then he'll roll. You got six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You got the university. That's a good card. It is what it is. Okay, another one of those can... I'm going to pay a stone now and get the crane. And I'm trying to decide, do I want to just go ahead and get the stone right back? Because I get one resource back. Yeah, I might just go ahead and get the stone back. Now when playing construction, I may discard the crane from my city to play that construction for three fewer. 
I can also play the Architect for free. And so that's, the, that's a pretty good card, especially in multiplayer. It's not quite as strong here because of the fact that uh, we will be giving him the advantage of getting an extra card played. Let's roll. Seven, the Undertaker. Okay. Palace is a good card. You can start pivoting at some point and going for the higher value cards that are going to cost me a little bit more to get down. I've got lots of berries over here, but nothing really to spend them on right now other than maybe the Wanderer. Could use some more cards in hand. I think I will go ahead and pay two berries for the Wanderer. He goes outside my city, but for purposes right now, I think, well, I'm just going to place him outside my city. Um, and so I get three cards for playing him. I got a good card in there, good. And I got the wife. So that goes down. Rug wart. I <laughs> just got that right as soon as it came down. Oh, and I'm in a little bit of trouble because Rugwort now has four growth things, so Rugwort will be able to claim that one already. And I don't have any more workers to put on it. You need to have a worker to put on that. And actually could have afforded it, but not without a worker, unless something comes up that allows me to get a worker move, which is the ranger would let me do that. But I don't have a ranger in my hand, and he hasn't come up. But let's go ahead and keep chaining. I'm going to go ahead and play the wife by putting a door on my second farm. Rugwort is now going to roll. Oh, Rugwort got the palace. That's not good. Now comes another twig barge. That's not useful. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and play the monk, why not? Cost me one berry to play him. And then I can give two berries to an opponent, but Rugwort doesn't take them, so I just put them back in there. In order to gain two victory points each, so I'll gain three, four victory points for doing that, and that's represented by these little tokens right here. You gotta roll. Six. Now it comes the Evertree. That's one of my favorite cards to get played because it's worth five points, plus one point for each prosperity you have in your city, and then you can play any critter you want to for free. And so that can become in real handy if you get to be able to, to get that down and get a good critter that you want to play. That would normally cost a lot of resources, but would be free for you. I don't have any cards that I can play right now, so I am going to move on to the next season. So I get the new, I get, and now I have four meeples. And moving into this season, the third season, second transition, I get to choose two cards that are down there and put them in my hand. I'm going to grab this so Rugwork can't get his grimy hands on it. And it's a bit late for Clock Tower. That's a good card early game as it puts three victory points on there, but then you can spend one each round. Anywhere you have a worker here or on these things, you can reactivate that for one victory point, uh, which is very worthwhile in that situation. But we've already gone through two seasons now. Oh, that doesn't come out yet. Um, hmm. I'm not sure what else I want to grab. Maybe the school. Maybe the school. Okay, so I grab those two cards and then two come up right here. And now Rugwort is going to move on down to the stone. And Rugwort is going to move over to here. And Rugwort adds a new one on there. 
Oh, and at the end of the season, Mugwort was able to claim this because he has four over here. I know you can't see that, but he has actually more than four. He has five of those symbols. He's also got two of the footprints, so I need to kind of be careful there. That he doesn't steal that one from out from under me. Although I don't currently have any footprints. I need to work towards that because I want to be able to get this, this one. I need to have at least two for that. Um, I got two. I got one prosperity. Two of the scrolls, I got one of the satchel, and plenty of the plants. So, I need to go ahead and work on getting, uh, we really haven't seen any of the paw prints other than the two he's managed to snag. I have any in my hand either. Let's just try and work towards something for now. Down here. Two of these. Down here. Get three of these. And that will allow me to go ahead and play school. Get two wood. Two resin. And what I'm going to work towards. I'm going to get stone for my free resource. And he will roll. Roll three. Minor mole. He allows you to copy one in your one of the, that's symbol in your opponent's city. And so, uh, he's got a lot of those, and I could copy any one of his. I think I'm going to work and get this dungeon played. So in order to do that, I need to come where I can get at least one of those. I think I'm going to come here. Get resin and berry. And then I'm going to play dungeon that and two stones and I'm going to get a stone back I think that's in my best interest yeah okay fairgrounds it's piling on there peddler has come out he allows you to trade when you play him and during the new season I come here and I'll get a resin and a card. Okay. Going into the final season, I get my last two extra workers, these guys. I do not feel like I'm playing a good game today. We will see what happens. Now, this one is going to go from there over to here on the three. Uh, in medium difficulty, he would go to four. In hard difficulty, he'd go to five. I'm just going to play on easy difficulty. That's what I've been doing. And then the last two of his workers come out like that. Those are all now covered up. I can't take those cards. And let's see what I can make happen in this last round. He does not claim any more of these basic events. I'm going to come here. Get wood. Resin and a berry. And then I'm going to use the crane's ability to play the Evertree for three less. So the three less is going to be two stone and a resin. I'm going to pay three wood, two resin, and a stone. And then this goes in the discard pile. He rolls, gets a seven. Didn't want that card, so that's good. Oh, Shopkeeper came up way too late. That's a great early game card. Basically, whenever you play a critter, you gain one berry for each critter. Very good card for early game. And I had the general store. I could have played her for free. Oh, I forgot to do the new season stuff. Uh, for the new season, the last season, I go ahead and activate all of my green cards one last time. 
So I would have gotten a berry there, a berry there, a resin. That may have changed what I was going to do then. And that wouldn't have. Uh, I gained two berries for that card. Uh, I could pay up to two berries, which I will, to get four more victory points. And that is all. Okay. So with all that having been done, I think I'm going to go ahead and get the doctor for free with the Evertree. When I get, grab him, I can pay up to three berries to gain a victory point each. So I will do that. Three vi berries for three victory points. And I just played a card, so we got to see what happens. Innkeeper is another decent card early game. Or really any time if you have something you want to play. Because he lets you be re replace him and pay three less berries. But also that's kind of one of those cards that you want to be careful about using too often in solo mode. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and claim this. Since I have... Oh! Actually, I should have claimed that earlier. Uh, before I, right before I played the Ever Tree, I would have claimed that. Because I had three of them at that time. Um, let's see. I only got one... I need another one of those symbols. I need a bunch of those symbols. This isn't gonna happen. I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna get any of these special events. Which is the key to beating Rug War is getting special events and basic events. Um, I can play her for free. Let's see what happens. I should have done that first. Put this on the general store. And then that's the ruins. I can't play another Evertree because those are unique constructions, and you're gonna play unique constructions and unique critters, uh, one of them in your city. Okay, so I am going to take the monk and put him in the dungeon. Which he no longer would count for points, but he was zero points anyway. And when I do that, I can play any construction, decreasing the cost by three. So I'm gonna grab the monastery to get my first paw print. He's gonna grab this, which means this isn't going to be helpful. That wasn't gonna be helpful anyway. Oh, and since I played a construction, I was going to I get a resource of my choice. I don't have a clue what I need. I'm going to grab a resin. Okay. I'm going to pay a berry to get the innkeeper, but then the berry comes back to me. Because of the shopkeeper. Fairground just came up. That could be good if I get to keep it. Um, eight. Up comes the historian. We got three wood. I can then play, pay one wood, two resin, and a stone to play fairgrounds. Draw two cards. I'm going to get a stone back. Here comes this guy. Roll a seven. Not the best thing you could roll, and that's not the best thing that could come out.
I only have one space left currently in my city. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play the Fool for free. And this you play to Rugwart's city. Where'd my Fool go? Oh, there he goes. What happens when you do that is uh, you discard the Fool and you remove any card from Rugwart City, so I'll remove a Prosperity because they're worth more points. In that case, he doesn't actually get to draw a card. I'm going to come here, I'm going to pay two berries to get four victory points. So I can come here and get a resin and a card. Okay, this is probably a bad idea. That's the only way I can calculate being able to do what I need to do. I am going to play the Barge Toad for free by discarding the Innkeeper. Fortunately, it's going to roll. Grab Clock Tower. Useful. Um, and when I did that, I got two for each farm in my city. Just like that. Now I can play this card. It's going to cost me three wood, a stone. And that. We rolled one last time. Out comes the husband. Now I have one critter left. And all I can do is come here. I have four cards in my hand. One, two, three, four cards, four points. Come in here. And that's all she wrote. I'll have to add up my score and see what I got. Okay, so I count up these first. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because she's paired with a husband. Eleven, twelve. This is worth nothing. 13, 14, I'll come back to that in a minute, 15, 15 plus 5 is 20, 21, 22, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, so 34 plus these extra prosperity points I skipped over, this is worth 1 for each pros uh, prosperity in my city, so 34, 35, 36, 37, and this one is worth one for each common critter, so 38, 39, 40, 41, that's 41 points. This one's worth one for each unique critter, so 42. I'm sorry, 42, 43, 43, so I scored 43 that way, plus another 3 here, so that's, for this, that's 46, plus 4 for the journey, which is where I placed the, um, the last one on the board there, so that's 50. And I got all these victory points here. That 369, 1 is 10, so that's 63, 64, 65. I wasn't able to claim any of the special events, which is going to be really, really bad. So the way the scoring works is Rugwort is going to score two points per card in his city. 
but an extra point for each purple prosperity card. Let's see what Rugward has over here. These are all of his regular cards. And these are his two prosperity cards. These are each worth two points apiece. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, plus six points is 40, plus he got this, which makes 43, plus each of the events that I did not achieve, which each of the special events that I did not achieve, which is all of them, gets three points each. So three, six, nine, twelve. I think it, we said forty, right? So fifty-two. He scored fifty-two points, and I scored sixty-four, I believe it was. So I actually did win. That's kind of surprising, but generally I normally would play on normal. And so maybe that's why I kind of felt like I was doing so poorly. Uh, on normal, he would have scored, uh, oh, I forgot his three points for the journey. So he actually got 55. I still won by nine points. Uh, but if he'd played on normal, then he would have been on the four-point journey space instead of the three. So he would have gotten 56 because of that. And he also would have gained six points for every special event that I did not, instead of three. So he would have basically doubled his special events we would have won on normal. And I'll leave you to discover year three, the hard year on your own. There's a few extra caveats in there. So that's how you play the solo mode of Everdell. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to see more videos. I'll catch you in the next one.